Here we are, as in olden days, happy golden days, up yours, 2020, faithful friends. Seasons, greetings, one and all, and welcome back to Tom's Hit Parade. Here I am presenting the second of my two holiday-themed videos for this year. Uh, and you might notice that in yesterday's video I wore green, so naturally today uh, I will be wearing the other signature color of Christmas, which is red. And uh, before I go any further, I just want to take this extra opportunity to wish you all a healthy and safe holiday season. Uh, two adjectives that I was hoping we wouldn't have to use this year, but well, there you go. That's 2020 for you. Yes, if you are uh, lucky enough to be able to celebrate with your your family and uh, loved ones. That is wonderful. Uh, if not, uh, just take comfort in knowing there are a lot of people who are in your situation as well. So, But nevertheless, uh, here's to Christmas 2021 being much more bright and, uh, and merry. But anyway, today's uh, video is going to be my holiday now and then video. Uh, yes, I did one last year. That was my inaugural edition. And yes, now and then, uh, for those of you who don't know, is a video feature, a regularly irregular feature, as I like to call it, in which I talk about two albums by the same artist, their newest release as well as one from their past. Well, the holiday now and then is just a tweak on that formula in which I talk about uh, two albums that are not by the same artist. Uh, one of them is a holiday album released this year, or on might be on rare occasion the previous year, in, in case I find absolutely no holiday albums to my liking in the current year. Uh, and the then selection will be a holiday album from the past. So let's go ahead and get right on into the festivities here, uh, in more ways than one, and talk about the first album. Uh, for now, I'll be talking about a Very Trainer Christmas by Megan Trainer. This is her holiday album released this year. And I actually did not realize she was releasing a holiday album until I believe it was the week before it dropped. And uh, fortunately, I had a trip to Target planned on the weekend of its release. So I was able to pick up the Target edition, which has two bonus tracks. Uh, the, all of the tracks that are in the digital edition, it's just the standard retail CD edition excludes two tracks on it. And, uh, you know, honestly, after such a psychologically grueling year as 2020, uh, one artist that I could count on to release an upbeat holiday album would have been Megan Trainer. So it, it was, uh, it came at a time that it was sorely needed, I think. Uh, so yes, it was a very, very welcome surprise indeed. Now, the album features a mix of about two-thirds covers and one-third original songs. There are six original songs uh, on the uh, CD, to be exact. And uh, there are standout examples of both the covers and the originals. The opening track, My Kind of Present, which uh, was the first single issued from the album, is textbook Megan Trainer. I mean, it has her trademark throwback pop kind of sound, but you know, with a 21st century edge in it. And uh, Christmas Got Me Blue is uh, another one of the standout uh, originals, in my opinion. Uh, it's just another uniquely Megan track that's for some reason appeals to me. And uh, I'll Be Home is on the Target edition. It's uh, the next to the last track, I believe. And it was originally released on a 2014 EP. And it's another excellent original song on this album. Now, as for the covers on this album, uh, Megan does a rendition of Last Christmas, which you might recall is the uh, 80s Christmas classic by George Michael of Wham. And that is probably my favorite cover on this album, uh, since it, it basically feels like a totally natural fit for Megan, uh, probably because its original arrangement is not far out of Megan's wheelhouse. I mean, it's just a traditionally upbeat uh, song. She doesn't stray too far from the original arrangement of the song. Uh, she also covers My Only Wish, which was originally recorded by Britney Spears probably about 20 years ago. I've never been a big fan of that song, but she actually does a pretty darn good arrangement uh, of that too. She does justice to that, to that song as well. So, And probably for the same reason, because it was a naturally upbeat song. Kind of reminds me of uh, All I Want for Christmas is You by uh, Mariah Carey. So, And in terms of older classics, uh, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas, and Holly Jolly Christmas are very, very pleasant. Uh, again, she doesn't stray too far from the original arrangements. Don't mess with, with the classics is, I guess, the approach that she took with those. Uh, she does lovely jobs also on The Christmas Song, Chestnuts Roasting on Open Fire, and Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas. Uh, and Winter Wonderland is given a unique arrangement uh, by being centered around the ukulele, which is kind of, it, it's different. And she honestly, she pulls it off in my opinion. I, I think that's just a great, a nice little bit of uh, fresh air, if you will, uh, in amongst the, the, the more stick to traditional arrangements. She plays with that one a little bit, which uh, does it justice, I think. 
And the closing track, I cannot leave without mentioning the closing track, is an a cappella re rendition of Silent Night, which is just absolutely gorgeous. It's beautiful. It's a fantastic, perfect way to close the album. It's just gorgeous. Now, there are two celebrity features on this album, which are both really good. Uh, the first one is called Holidays, and that's an original track which features Earth, Wind, and Fire. And that is a fun and upbeat, uh, old-school, R&B-inflected track. Uh, kind of, it has a lot of 70s sound to it, which would only stand to reason if it's featuring Earth, Wind, and Fire. And that's just great. And uh, she also duets with Seth MacFarlane, and you know how much I love Seth MacFarlane, on a rendition of White Christmas which is well done. Uh, each of their voices individually are, of course, excellent. Although the track just, there's just something missing out of the track for me. It just doesn't seem to have the chemistry between Megan and Seth that I was hoping for. Uh, or maybe it's just the fact that it was Seth MacFarlane. I, I just assumed they were going to knock it out of the park or something. But, uh, and I, I realize that most collaborations are recorded separately and combined in post-production, and that's probably, in, with the current world situation, that's pretty much a necessity. They kind of have to do that nowadays, right now. But for some reason, it just feels that way. It feels like it was uh, assembled from parts. So that's you know a, a point away from that track for me, which really disappoints me as much as I just love Seth MacFarlane. Though part of me refuses to call that one a miss, uh, there are actually a few misses on this album, uh, much as I hate to say it. Uh, about half of the originals just didn't do anything for me. Uh, I Believe in Santa, which is one of them, has what I call that marching band kind of an arrangement, a marching band sound to it, which it was a big thing with uh, R&B songs like uh, about a decade ago, I think, and it, that, that's a big turnoff for me. And maybe it's because I associate that sound with R&B be that and you know you know how I what I said in uh, yesterday's video about not preferring the the R&B genre for Christmas songs that might be a psychological thing that makes me not like that song very much uh, there are a couple of other uh, the other two originals Naughty List and Christmas Party were two others that unfortunately I just didn't feel much of anything for honestly you know ni neither positive nor negative they just I just didn't click with them for whatever reason and uh, another one of the songs that has kind of an R&B arrangement is her rendition of Sleigh Ride and so that, you know, that kind of just, it just detracted from the enjoyment for me. Uh, I, I wanted to enjoy it, but uh, yeah, it just that's just how it happened with me. And uh, then there's Holly Jolly Christmas, which didn't honestly add anything that any other arrangement of the song doesn't have, uh, except for her pretty vocals. So, you know, the fact that, you know, as I said with some of the other songs, the fact that she didn't stray from the original arrangement helps those songs. This one, it just kind of felt like, maybe she could have added something a little bit more to that one. So, you know, take into that what you will. That's just how I, I took away from these songs. One thing not relating to the actual content of the album that kind of turned me off at first was the album title. Uh, I just I just felt was, it was kind of lazy, especially since Casey Musgraves just in the last couple of years released a holiday album called A Very Casey Christmas. And this one is called A Very Trainer Christmas. Uh, but then when I realized that Megan had made this album a, a real family affair, a family thing, with several family members singing or playing uh, in Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, for instance, uh, it, that does have some charm in that uh, three of her cousins sing along in the background. So that adds some charm that the song probably otherwise wouldn't have had, so then I would have probably called that one a miss. Uh, as well as her choice of guest artists, uh, which you know, Earth, Wind, and Fire, and Seth MacFarlane are family favorite artists of her of her family. So that's one reason why she chose them. So taking all that into consideration, it actually made uh, quite a bit more sense that she called this a very trainer Christmas. But yeah, a, a very enjoyable holiday album. And honestly, it's you know, despite its shortcomings, which are pretty few, honestly, uh, it was a very very welcome little bright spot at the end of uh, a not very good year. But that was now, and this is then. Twelve Tales of Christmas by Tom Chaplin, the frontman for the rock band Keen. Now, this album was released in 2017, but if you ask me if there's one Christmas album that feels like it was made for 2020, this is it. Now, uh, I had known about this album for a couple of years now, uh, being a fan of Keen as well as of Tom Chaplin himself. I have a, uh, his first solo album as well. But I didn't get around to buying it until just last month when it was uh, I found out that it was part of a buy two get one free sale on Amazon, which which I'm more than happy to take advantage of and believe me. Now uh, while the lyrics are somewhat optimistic sometimes, uh, the album's sonic palette is mostly subdued, low-key, almost melancholy. 
uh, which is kind of reflected by the uh, album cover, the, the color palette of the album cover. And the almost mournful quality of Tom Chaplin's vocals adds to its moody aesthetic. Now, the album does not have any traditional Christmas songs or carols, none of those kinds of covers. Uh, and in a way, I'm kind of surprised that he didn't include a rendition of In the Bleak Midwinter, since its title, at least, would have fit right in on this album. Uh, but this album does have covers of four songs, although they might arguably be odd choices for covers on a Christmas album. Uh, the most famous cover that he performs on here is of Joni Mitchell's River, which has a winter theme in the lyrics, obviously. And being kind of melancholy in spirit fits into this album, although its familiarity, uh, mainly the familiarity of the melody of the song, as well as Tom's excellent handling of it, I mean, he just have, does a fantastic job on this song, uh, does provide an oddly comforting feeling in a way. Maybe like a, an old sweater or blanket that you don't necessarily like, but the fact that it's old and familiar, you know, gives it a sense of warmth in a way, you know, not literally, but figuratively. Now, perhaps the most unusual choice for a cover is a song called Stay Another Day, which was originally by the UK boy group East 17. Now, it was originally written by the group's frontman in honor of his deceased brother, uh, but here Tom turns it into a plea for a lover not to leave, as maybe it would signal that the holiday or the entire relationship is over. So yeah, that's that, a, a very affecting song, very, very wonderful inclusion on this album. And uh, the other two covers, he, he does uh, a rendition of the Pretender song 2,000 Miles, which he gives an almost hymn-like quality with its swelling chorus. It just kind of have the, has this, uh, you know, uh, cavernous, epic sort of a feel to it. It's just beautiful. As well as the opening track, Walking in the Air, which is apparently a popular Christmas time song that many artists have covered over the years, according to its Wikipedia page. Uh, but it appears to me that the vast majority of its popularity is in U the UK and Europe, as opposed to in the States, because I don't think I had ever heard of the song before. But uh, still, it's you know very, very good renditions of all four of the songs. And now turning to the Tom Chaplin originals on this album, Under a Million Lights uh, may be the most optimistic track on the album, and it is indeed a bright spot, no pun intended, with a rhythm that lifts it off the ground and gives it some momentum, some wings, uh, despite lyrics that scream 2020, such as, It's so easy to think we're screwed reading the front page news. And then we have a track called For the Lost, which opens with the lyric, Everyone is running scared, all terrified and unprepared, which also harkens back to what most of this year has felt like. But the chorus tries to turn things around by pleading with us to only bring your light and gather up, don't be afraid, the future's ours and ours to make. So there, there is, as I said, some optimism in there amongst the, the, the bleakness uh, in some of the lyrics. And uh, yeah, maintaining a balance between despair and hope is seems to be a theme on this album. In the song London Lights, he sings, For all the violence we see, for all the mindless suffering, here we stand with this town, there's still love to be found. And then yet another very 2020 lyric in this album occurs in the song We Remember You This Christmas. In the chorus, Tom sings, To those we lost along the way, to those we love, I want to say, from those of us still here today, we remember you this Christmas. And granted, that's a message that could be valid any year, but with this year that was filled with so much unnecessary loss of life, uh, it's even more relevant, if you ask me. Now, one thing I particularly enjoyed listening for in this album was Tom's trick of sneaking titles or lyrics from traditional carols into his original songs. Uh, for instance, in Midnight Mass, he sings, O Come All Ye Faithful Friends, and in the track London Lights, he sings about angels in their realm of glory, and it came upon the midnight clear. Uh, so I thought that was very, very clever, the, the way he interpolated those uh, Easter eggs into a Christmas album. So uh, by now I'm sure you can see why I said this was just the perfect album for a 2020 Christmas. Uh, I can so acutely identify right now with so much of its mood. Uh, it's the kind of Christmas where we can, as always, be thankful for what we have or what we still have. And for, you know, for those of us who are able to do so, being able to be with family and loved ones. Uh, but that full-on celebrating Christmas this year just doesn't quite feel right, you know? So, but yes, overall, this is just a wonderful Christmas album, uh, a wonderful album in general. Uh, just, I, I got so much out of it. It's just, you know, it's took me by surprise in a way that I didn't expect it would. Uh, you know, so many Christmas albums are ear candy, I guess you'd say. You know, the, the Christmas carols, the fun, holly jolly songs. Uh, at, at least for, you know, those of us like me who don't participate in the 
religious undertones of Christmas, but still believe in its spirit, you know, it's, you know, it's happiness and all that stuff. You know, so much holly jolly Christmas music around there that's so much ear candy. This, in turn, is, it, it's meat and potatoes. It's kind of a, a something to take into the brain and the soul and, you know, think about what you've got and uh, what some people don't have. So, yeah, wonderful, wonderful, beautiful album. But now here comes the big question that I usually close my now and then videos with, uh, symbolically more than anything else, and that is, which of these two albums do I prefer? And honestly, I don't, it's a real draw this time, because each one has its strengths and its weaknesses, and I could pick either of them for different reasons. Uh, when I need to be cheered up or want to hear more identifiable Christmas songs, I'd probably pick A Very Trainer Christmas, whereas if I want something more atmospheric or substantive, or, you know, something that makes me think a little bit more. Or maybe if I just feel like I want to wallow in the melancholy, I would probably choose The Twelve Tales of Christmas. That would probably be a better choice. So, but yeah, in my opinion, both of these albums are worth picking up, worth listening to, uh, to, to enrich your Christmas in many different ways, uh, so, so many different uh, aspects. And so as we wind down on the Christmas season, that'll do it for my holiday now and then for 2020. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And give me your thoughts, questions, suggestions, or constructive criticisms in the comments section below. Also scroll down to the description for a link to my Twitter and Instagram feeds, and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Have a healthy and safe holiday and a happy new year out there, everyone. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob.